David Amber, Kelly Chase, Craig Button. Uh, we'll have much more on Sidney Crosby out now indefinitely after returning for just eight games. Once again, concussion-like symptoms. Uh, big story, though, breaking in L.A. in the last hour, and that is the firing. The fifth NHL coach to go down so far this season, Terry Murray, dismissed from his position. John Stevens taking over on an interim basis. The Kings, 12th in the Western Conference, one of the teams many had picked as a favorite going into the season. Chaser, your thoughts on the situation Stevens in, Murray out? Well, I think the situation comes down to, listen, they've, they've got time to make an adjustment where they can still get them where, themselves where they want to be at the end of the season. When players stop responding to a coach, you can feel it in the locker room. Guys are looking over their shoulders. Coaches sometimes change a little of their attitude. They try everything they can to get guys going. And when it doesn't work, it's kind of a morbid feeling around there. That's the feeling that, they, that we understand was coming out of the locker room in L.A. And when that happens, there's a change that has to be made. Yeah, the Boomtown Rats had a song that's, that went, I don't like Mondays, and uh, I think that's the coach's <laughs> refrain right now. The four coaches have been let go on Mondays now. But, you know, I think there's a lot of blame to go around here for the L.A. Kings. You know, starting with uh, the Drew Doughty fiasco. I mean, he ends up uh, not getting a full training camp out of shape, and, and that, to me, was a fiasco. I didn't think it needed to go that long. You know, Brad, uh, Mike Richards and Simon Gagne have 14 even-strength goals. Five out of their other forwards combined have 13. So, I mean, you got players that aren't performing well and you know you have a system that I think that uh, you know they have to play tight where would this team be if Jonathan Quick hadn't stood on his head on the number of nights he did they'd have three or four less laws not three or four less wins one more thing that I want to say too is I, I, I really see this as a team everybody talks about them being a Stanley Cup contender they haven't won a, they haven't won a playoff round mm -hmm. even though they've been in the playoffs the last couple of years they haven't won a playoff round and I don't think their team's very very well built quite frankly I think they got too many gaps in their forward group and too many gaps on defense I agree with that and one of the things they will say about it I think why they get talked about as being a good team is that they're in a situation now where they've they've built from the net with a good goaltender they've got a couple of good young defensemen but I don't think defensemen get real good at what they do until they're 27 28 years old and they're getting strong and they got Kopitar in the middle so they've built kind of with the strengths now what they do with these other guys these other intangibles around them is the difference maker and I'm not sure that some of these guys are exactly where they need to be at I mean they're they're you've got guys in situations where if they're on other teams they're maybe set back a line and and and, and on a good team and they're you know instead of being a two they're probably a three on the right side or or vice versa and so I agree with you on that I think there might be a little bit more hype than there is meat on this bone yeah well I, I want to follow that up too and I mm -hmm. couldn't agree with you more about the defenseman can you imagine you're the, you're, you're 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 putting your hopes on a 21 year old defenseman 21 year old defensemen don't lead you lead you anywhere unless their last name begins with O and the last the next two letters are RR <laughs> you know like it does it just doesn't happen 24 25 26 is when they're ready to take charge and assert themselves. I mean, Dustin Penner, that was their big acquisition at the trade line. He's a third-line winger. Now they're counting on him to come in and make the difference. He's not a difference maker. He's a support player. And to your point, they're missed. they got a bunch of players miscast. And, you know, great. You have all the hope you want. But it, you better be realistic the, about it. This begs the question, though, guys. Last year, this team, 98 points, made it into the playoffs, seventh in the Western Conference. There was a lot of optimism going into this year. Not that many parts have changed. Obviously, the Mike Richards and Simon Gagné acquisitions are the big pieces that have been added. Um, but why do you think then... You, the way it's sounding is that Terry Murray maybe not as culpable in the problems with this team. You guys say it's a personnel problem. What's the difference with the personnel this year and last year? Well, I think first of all, you, when you look at the team, you can say you could you can look to Richards and say, well, he's had an injury. That would have certainly helped. But if you're looking at a team that you're talking about being in the top of the league as, as a contender, and you lose one player, I don't care if he's your best player or where he fits in the roll call. You lose him and you're telling me that's an excuse for not winning. You don't have the depth that you need to win in this league and you're not exactly where you think you are as far as uh, you know your winning percentage and you're not going to be where you want to be at the end of the year. Injury is a part of every single team. And so when personnel changes and with an injury to Richards, yeah, he's a big help. He's a big factor and can make, make a difference. But you know what? You're paid to win hockey games and when you're at the top of the cap, you got to have enough depth in there to get you over those humps when you lose guys to injury. Yeah, well, again, like, in, in, let's just go around the league. And Well, Pittsburgh, they only go without Sidney Crosby and Malkin and Jordan Stahl. The Detroit Red Wings, every year, I mean, they run into injuries. They don't lose because they got depth. They're, like you said, I love that term, meat on the bones. That's what they got. There's not enough meat on the bone in L.A. And you can be as optimistic as you want, and you can talk about, hey, listen, we're moving in the right direction. Stanley Cup contenders? Give me a break.
Well, in steps interim head coach John Stevens, a former head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, what does he have to do then to get the most contributions out of this uh, team that you guys say lacks a bit of the depth and the right personnel to move far forward, Kelly? Well, I think what has to happen is everybody in the organization may have to step back a little bit and, and l let the uh, room air out a bit. So whether it's the general manager or the or ownership group or some of the coaches, everybody's got to say, if, it's really, if you're really going to let him be in charge and you're really going to let him try and get this thing turned around, you have to have the, you know, the ability to let him, you know, spread his wings and fly a little bit to say. I mean, I, I look at what happened in St. Louis with our team. When Hitch, when Hitch comes in, he's allowed to maneuver the way he knows and sees fit. So you've got to let Stevens do that. You can't micromanage him or nothing changes. So what you want to do is let the coach go in there, have some of his own ideals, let them run with it. It becomes refreshing to the players. Hopefully, kickstarts them because, Craig, really, the onus is on the players. I mean, this coach can't play for them. No, yeah, the, no question about it and, and we can put the onus on the player as far as I'm concerned Dean Lombardi's on the clock this is exactly what happened in San Jose he took a team made it much much better but they could never get over the hump until Doug Wilson got in there and now Dean's come into LA he's done a really nice job of building it up this is a real to me this is Dean's po point in time where he has to help this team move ahead I, I think they got to make some changes to their group add some strength add some meat to that bone because right now you can keep changing coaches you can you can try to get the players to do more you are what you are and right now the LA Kings to me they need to get some so, uh, better players so you're saying if you plant a potato you grow a potato yeah I okay, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> Dean Lombardi just had a, a press conference out in Los Angeles and he did say there's no specific timetable for John Stevens right now to wipe off that interim tag and perhaps become the new head coach permanently of the Los Angeles Kings that is a developing situation we will keep an eye on so some big news in LA uh, we'll have more from our insider Darren Drager in just a matter of moments first though we got to talk about the other big uh, news story today and it's not a good news story out of Steel